Hi everyone, we are just under 24 hours before the class begins, so I just want to walk you through quickly everything that's expected of you uh, for week number one. And every week that we progress through the summer has pretty much the exact same assignments due. Um, so I'm making this video for week number one so we can all kind of get in the hang of how things will work and then hopefully it just becomes kind of second nature uh, moving into week two all the way through week eight. So I'm right here on uh, the course's homepage. Not all of this is available to you um, today on Sunday, um, just before class starts, but on Monday, on June 1st, everything will be uh, available for you. So if you're looking at this before Monday, um, don't be alarmed if you don't see everything. You will see it come June 1st. So just some quick notes. Uh, the syllabus has been completely and totally updated, so it's no longer a draft, it's now the final. It's basically the exact same as the draft. There's just a little bit more information on there, uh, in particular about how your grade breakdown works, uh, what um, percentages deserve what grade. So you can take a look uh, there, but all of the readings are uh, almost exactly the same. Um, so you really want to take a look at that. Remember, one of the keys to success in online classes is to plan ahead so that you're not scrambling last minute um, to get things done. So what else can we find on our homepage uh, for Canvas? Well, after we go past the syllabus, you'll notice that there's a module here called Rubrics and Advice. Um, right now in there, there are two rubrics. One is for the discussion board post. Uh, the other is for papers one, two, and your weekly responses. Um, you don't have to worry about papers one and two yet. Those aren't even assigned, but you do have your first weekly response due uh, this Friday. So you might want to take a look at this rubric before you begin writing your weekly response to recognize uh, what's expected of you. The next module is this helpful material to prepare for class. Uh, I made you two introduction videos, which hopefully some of you uh, have gotten the chance to view already. Uh, the first walks you through the syllabus, through Canvas, and through how to access the textbook. Uh, the second one walks you more specifically through Launchpad which is the online uh, learning module that's associated with our textbook and some of the assignments. So you really do need to make sure that you watch these videos before class begins. And you can always come back to them and reference them uh, throughout the course if you're wondering about different assignments or different materials, uh, especially video number two might be useful for you. There's also two other links here. If you're having trouble pairing uh, Canvas and Launchpad, you can watch uh, the video uh, that's right here, Instructions to Pair, and then the second video, Macmillan, uh, walks you more specifically through uh, Launchpad. So if you want a little bit more information of what I provide, um, you've got that available for you. There's also an extra credit uh, assignment already. That's a good way to start class, right? Extra credit. Um, but there's a little bit uh, of a discussion board here that gives you the opportunity to just tell me a, a bit about yourself. And uh, if you complete that, I'll add uh, two points to your first weekly response, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider the fact that they're out of 10, uh, that's 20% uh, to your first weekly response. So you wanna make sure you get that done. You'll notice the due date for that is June 3rd, so that's Wednesday, that is not Friday. Uh, so you need to get that done uh, before the week is over. And here we are, right into week one. I've laid these out in the order that I think you should work through them. Uh, I think the first thing you should do is complete the textbook reading. And so how do you do that? Just a quick refresher. If you come up here to Macmillan Learning, you click that link for Macmillan Learning, and then you click this ebook link, or you can click, I like to just click the Launchpad link because it takes you right to Launchpad, and I think that's easier. You click the Launchpad, and then you click the ebook here, and you can navigate yourself uh, through the different sections. We're starting with um, uh, Chapter 13, so you can scroll right down to Chapter 13. You can start with the introduction right here. We actually start two pages back with the introduction to Part 4. So you have to go back two pages, um, but we're going to start here with chapter 13. You'll notice that through um, the textbook, it often will prompt you, and I'm walking through it right now. Here we are on page 546, and we're going to keep reading. It might bring you to um, different quizzes or text or um, map assignments. You don't need to complete any of those other than um, the uh, summative quiz and the learning curve, which are assigned separately, and I'll get to those in a minute. So if you get to like a map quiz or something, feel free to take it to practice uh, a little bit uh, with your geographic skills, um, but they are not necessary. So you don't need to do them if you're prompted uh, to complete one, just you can skip over it or, or practice if you feel the need. Uh, but if you go home, of course, 
you will notice um, that if we go to our home page here, the only thing that you are required to do uh, is the uh, learning curve and summative quizzes, uh, which are due. So if you click in this chapter 13, it pulls it all out here and here they are. Learning curve for chapter 13, the summative quiz for chapter 13. Remember, at least for this first chapter, I'm giving you two opportunities to take the quiz uh, and there's no time limit on the quiz. Now that might change and I'll, I'll keep you posted about that for week number two, but just while we're learning the ropes of things, um, there is no uh, time limit and you have two opportunities to take uh, the summative quiz. So if we go back to our Canvas page, after you read the text, my advice would be to watch the lectures that I've created. And there are three links here. Uh, this lecture comes in three parts, part one, two, and three. So there are three links here that'll take you to my YouTube page. And there are three different 15 minute uh, lectures that I provide. So after you uh, complete the textbook reading, I would watch those lectures. Uh, from there, there's another kind of independent, I don't have anything to do with making this lecture about that. I think he's, uh, Chinese exploration. So this actually takes us a little bit be before the chapter we start on, but I think it's a useful, uh, it used to be in an older version of the textbook, uh, this exploration uh, that Zheng Hu uh, participated in just before the 16th century was part of this chapter. Now in this new edition, they lump it into chapter 12 instead of chapter 13. I'm not sure why they did that. I think it fits well with this chapter. So uh, there's a short video here. Again, it's just about 18 minutes a little bit about Zheng Hu and about Chinese exploration of the Indian Ocean world, which is actually rather fascinating, especially for most of us who uh, have gone to school in American classrooms. We know all about Columbus. We know about maybe Spanish, Portuguese, French, English, Dutch settlement of the New World, but very few of us have ever learned uh, about Chinese exploration of the Indian Ocean world that began far before um, Christopher Columbus's voyage. Uh, so it's an interesting lecture for you to watch. There's this silly um, advertisement for a video game in the beginning of it. Uh, I don't don't recommend you, you pay any attention to that. Feel free to skip right over it. You can watch uh, the lecture. Then there is a primary source discussion board. So I'm going to open that up for you so you can see a little bit about what it is. I give you a little bit of background. There's also a link here where you can take a 360 degree tour of the Sistine Chapel, which I want everyone to do. And then there's a question here. What similarities do you notice between the Sistine Chapel and the Temple of Heaven? And how do both the Sistine Chapel and Temple of Heaven inspire worshipers to prayer? Which do you find more appealing and why? So I'm asking you to think cross-culturally, right? Uh, the Tower of Heaven is obviously located uh, in China and the Sistine Chapel in Rome. They're appealing to two very different religions, two different groups of people, but they're doing a lot of the same things. They're inspiring awe in the same ways. And so this discussion board post, which make sure you read the rubric on what exactly a discussion board post looks like, asks you to just kind of think about the similarities and differences between, between the two uh, images I'm having you take a look at and just kind of record some of your thoughts on it. Um, these should be pretty well organized, but there's no right or wrong answer, right? As I say, feel free to post an original response or reply to someone else's. And if you're interested in seeing like exactly what your response should look like, like I said, take a look at that rubric. So after you've completed the primary source discussion, you probably want to move on to the learning curve and the summative quizzes. Uh, and those are both done uh, via Launchpad and you can click these links here or access them like I showed you before. And then the last thing you want to do, in my opinion, is the week number one response. And uh, if you open this up, you'll see that I'm asking you to craft a one to two page rebuttal to someone who gives you uh, the following statement. Regardless of where empire building took place, conquered people were equally subjugated, abused, and mistreated. Um, everything we've learned in this, from our readings to the lectures um, to the primary source discussion, is kind of talking about empire building. And I think after completing all of the assigned material, you'll have some ideas to craft a response to that statement. Some of you might agree, some of you might disagree. Once again, there's really no right or wrong answer. The most important thing you can do is provide evidence from the assigned material to back up your stance. Ultimately, students who give uh, the most thorough responses using the evidence provided uh, will do the best on these assignments. And I know it's week one, so what I'll do is, and I'll do this every week actually, is post some of the best responses. I'll get permission from everyone and I'll post some of the best responses so you can compare your answer uh, with other students' answers. 
Um, and that pretty much takes us for everything uh, through everything due for week number one. So you can see that there's a little bit of material on it. You don't want to wait until Thursday or Friday to get this done. Friday at 5 p.m. is the deadline. About 10 of us, it's Sunday, about 3 p.m. right now. Uh, only 10 of us have signed up for the textbook, so some people are a little bit behind on that. It's not a big deal because you have instant access, um, but we've hit the ground running. Uh, I've been emailing you for about three and a half weeks now. Some of you are probably like, I've already had enough of this guy and class hasn't even started. Uh, but the reason I do it is to make sure that everyone's on the same page for when class begins. So for those of you who have signed up already, uh, you can get feel free to get started. Uh, you can submit the material when you're all done. Um, but Friday at 5 is that deadline. Uh, and because you've had this kind of information for a while now, I'm not the most flexible on things that come in after that. If you have any emails or uh, questions, sorry, or email uh, comments, or anything is confusing to you, anything at all, please feel free to reach out. Uh, if you know at one point in the summer you might be uh, a little bit more challenged to get everything done, you're taking a trip, you have some kind of um, big um, life event coming up, you know, let me know sooner rather than later on those. I still think uh, because everything is presented to you far in advance, you know what's going to be due, so you can always get a jump start on that, and you can do it from anywhere. But please let me know if you've got something like that ahead. If anything, like I said, is unclear, let me know of that too. Otherwise, I look forward to reading your primary source discussion responses uh, and your week one responses at the end of this week. Good luck!